It's been a long day. There's a few things I have to do here, some promises I made to some constituents back home. I got a letter this morning from a constituent of Senator from Montegaya and myself by the name of Ash Orr. And Ash came down here for the public hearings in the House of Delegates, but was only given 45 seconds. So she, they didn't have much time to express what they wanted to before the body. So Ash asked me if I would read their statement, and I'm going to do that today. My name is Ash Orr, and I'm a constituent from Montegaya County. I started my period in the fourth grade. I was nine. At the age of nine, I was watching cartoons with my father on the weekend, eating sugary cereal in my Power Rangers pajamas. At nine, I was a child. By the time I turned 10, I had been sexually assaulted two times. No one knew about the assaults other than myself and the individual who assaulted me. I was ashamed and I was scared. For days, I sat in my room, surrounded by my mother's pregnancy books that I'd been sneaking out of her small library. At the age of 10, I was sitting cross-legged on my bed, checking my stomach to see if there was any swelling. At the age of 10, I was filling my journal with fears of being pregnant and scared to tell my family what had happened to me. A few weeks after the last assault, I noticed I hadn't started my period. I vividly remember going into the bathroom and stealing one of my mother's pregnancy tests she kept under the sink. At the age of 10, I was now hiding in the bathroom and taking a pregnancy test. At the age of 10, a piece of plastic and a small test strip was going to determine my future. The moment the test turned negative, I knew I'd been spared. This time, at the age of 10, still covered in bug bites and sporting skin knees, I was a child and a sexual assault survivor. Today, I am 32 years old. I am the survivor of multiple assaults. I have survived domestic abuse and violence. I have, served all, I have survived all my worst days, even when I didn't think it was possible to keep pushing through. I am one of the lucky ones. But there are so many others who were not given this same opportunity. I'm not sharing my story for pity. I do not want to be told how I should have handled this trauma. What I want is for y'all to put yourself in my shoes. What, and I want, I want you to imagine being a 10-year-old hiding in the bathroom and taking a pregnancy test, checking in with yourself, acknowledging discomfort and fear you are feeling, acknowledge that this is the hell you are willing to place a child. Now I want you to try rationalizing how that's even remotely acceptable. For a child who has just survived sexual assault to carry a child. No child deserves to go through this pain, fear, and isolation. I am pleading with you to protect those of us with a uterus, Ash or Pretty touching. It's pretty touching. And it's a shame that they drove down here from Morgantown and she might have got, he, they may have gotten through one paragraph of that story because the leadership in the House of Delegates chose to give everyone 45 seconds. Then we get to the Senate, Mr. President. Ash couldn't come down here and testify because you and your leadership team chose not to send this bill to a committee against our obje objections. 
Emotions are running high, Mr. President. They're running extremely high. You had to clear the galleries today because of the emotions in the galleries. There was remarks made from this Senate floor that, in my opinion, were both hurtful and disgusting. And there was labeling done, accusing women of using abortion for birth control. There were statements made that doctors would lie just to profit from an abortion. There were statements made that women would just lie so they could terminate a pregnancy. Like this is just an everyday thing that happens. This is the most difficult time any pregnant person would ever have to face. And no one is going to lie as a form of birth control. I don't buy it. No one's going to convince me of that. I think it's total BS. And I think it's disgusting that leaders of this state would make such statements. We talked about the exceptions in this bill. I don't know that there's much exceptions here. I think it's more about smoke and mirrors. Eight weeks for an adult who has been sexually abused, when we know how traumatic of an experience that is, and 14 weeks for a child or a mentally incapacitated person, That, to me, Mr. President, is scary. My senior senator from Montegaya talked about someone on the spectrum. And I went down and I whispered in his ear, and I wasn't going to bring this up, but it's just it's eating at me. I have a family friend, one of my best friends, guy I worked with my whole career who has a child who is severely mentally challenged. She's probably in her early 30s. She's a very, very big girl. Very, very big girl. And she's nonverbal, Mr. President. If she was assaulted by a slimy relative or a slimy neighbor. I guarantee you her parents wouldn't know about that within that 14 weeks. And I guarantee you she couldn't tell anybody because she can't talk. And we think that's okay, that that family who had to raise that child from birth and give their whole life to that child should be faced with Another child coming from that mentally challenged daughter? I'm sorry, you call me a baby killer all you want. But there are exceptions. Everything is not black and white. Everything is not black and white. We don't know what the circumstances of that family are when they make the toughest damn decision they're ever going to have to make in their life. We don't know that. We shouldn't judge that. And for those of you in here that think you're holier than thou, there is one person who will judge that. And it's not anybody in this chamber. It's not anybody in that chamber across the hall. And it's not the guy downstairs. So if you truly believe, let's leave that judgment up to the higher being. I'm not only a no, Mr. President, I'm a hell no. Further discussion? Senator from Tucker. <coughs>